Okay, today we are taking a peek at our uh, cider. Our cider has been bubbling now about five, six days. Looking very good over here. Got six gallons of Cabernet Savion, which has been bubbling about six days. That is Heather's wine, the Cabernet, which I helped her uh, get started. So over here, we're going to start another little project. Because what do you do when you're on light duty and you're bored? Well, you buy beer, wine, and cider kits. It's easy to do. So today, uh, we are going to make a gallon of Brewer's Best IPA. I yield 10 to 12 bottles. I've got a nice little uh, one gallon um, big mouth bubbler. Uh, we got our caramel and our victory grains. We got our dried malt, uh, which will be a lot of fun. We have our sock there basically to make our wart. And we have some Chinook. And we have some Columbus grains. And uh, first thing you do before you do anything uh, with beer, Star Sands is, is the best sanitizer that I know of. And uh, I mixed up a bunch in my brew pot. And basically everything gets sanitized. Uh, with that said, just happened to get in my picture here from my month and a half old batch of Merlot. Well, got to have a little Merlot when you're making beverages. So this is part one. This is the start. And uh, part two, uh, you'll see the wart. Uh, wart's going to take ooh, about two hours. So we won't film it all. We'll film parts of it. So see you later. Okay, uh, part two. Uh, earlier you seen we're cleaning sanitizing and now <clears throat> we're going to begin making our wart. Now we need our temperature between 50, 150 and 165. Right now we're at about 155 which is about perfect. Uh, we have taken our caramel and our victory malt and we have uh, placed it into our sock. Basically, we are gonna, we're going to set this into the pot for about 20 minutes and let it steep. And uh, we're going to soon have wort. Um, you, if you let it get too hot, uh, you could get some funny tannins and issues. If you don't have it warm enough, you don't get all the goodies. So, for 20 minutes, we're going to let this sit in here and steep. And then we're going to have us a nice little um, wart to begin making our IPA. Now one of the things you must do and watch is that you kind of want this kind of spread out a little bit. You know, fatten it out a little bit. Get it along the bottom. That's why you tie a nice, real nice loose knot so everything in there can kind of just moosh around. Now one of the things you got to be careful with is letting it sit on the bottom because it can caramelize or burn it. So we're going to tend to this over 20 minutes and make sure that nothing burns or sticks. Okay. Now we are creating our wart. So we'll see you in 20 minutes. Okie dokie. Come over here and look. Can you see our uh, nice wart? Look how nice that wart is. Beautiful wart. Okay. Now we're going to remove our sock without getting burnt. Good and hot. And we're going to let all these goodies drain for a little bit. So we don't want to squeeze it. And we don't want to put any extra stuff in there. You just want that to drain out. While that's draining, we're going to bring our pot up to a boil. As soon as our pot comes to a boil, 
we are going to add our DME, our dried malt. Basically, we'll get the dry malt in, and then uh, we'll start adding our hop pellets and our Columbus pellets. That's going to take 40 minutes. So, we'll see you at the boil. All right, come here and look at the pot. See, that's a nice rolling boil. Might turn that down a little bit. Now we're going to install our dried malt. Um, one thing about putting the malt in with all the steam, sometimes the bag itself can get a little steamy at the end. So it can be a little tricky getting it all out of the bag. And you got to be uh, stir it because I got a nice deep pot. But if you didn't have this nice deep pot, well, it will boil over. And they'll tell you any beer unwatched will be a mess. And if it boils over, it will be a mess. Okay, so now we have to install our next bag. And uh, we're basically going to boil this for a good solid hour or thereabouts. And you get a good stir going. Come over here where you can see it going in, Devin. Can you see it going in there? Okay. And I'm clumping up with all the steam, which is normal. It happens. Okay. We're going to keep our boil going. We don't want to turn it down too much. So uh, I'm going to give us a few minutes. And then we're going to introduce our Columbus 5 gram hot pellets. Let's set our timer up here. Oop, kitchen. We're going to hit our start. And we're going to go ahead and introduce. Our first hops it's going to give it a really nice green effect here um, wouldn't hurt to let it cook a little more but I like to get things going so here we go and in 40 minutes we're going to add some more hops so We'll get back to you in about 40 minutes. Smell that? Now it smells like beer. Smell good? Smells real good. Okay, to continue with the boiling. Um, so far, we have hand we have <clears throat> added our Columbus. We got our Chinook in. It's really starting to smell like a beautiful IPA. Um, one of the things I didn't mention earlier that I'd like to mention is that I use bottled water, good Zephyr Hills bottled water. Tap water is okay, but I don't want the uh, chlorine and things of that nature. Keeping everything nice and clean and sanitized is very important. Um, next step coming up, we got our sink, our ice, we got our fermentator ready, we got our stuff to transfer, and uh, we're going to cold crash this to 70 degrees in about 20 minutes and uh, once we get everything set up we'll check the gravity and we will pitch the yeast and uh, then it's a matter of time see you soon okay we have completed our boil we turned her off basically what we have here is our somewhat finished product so the key now which is very important and the quicker you can do it the faster and the better you can do it some people have coils that they put in and run water through the coils but this is basically called a cold crash and uh, what we want to do is we want to get this boy it's dropping nice oh yeah it's dropping really quick if you see on the dial here uh, it was at 220 now it's under 200 uh, the faster you drop this, the quicker you can drop it and get it to 70 degrees to stabilize. 
and much better. So, we will see you after it's at 70 degrees and stabilized. Alrighty, everything's settling down really nice. All the ice is melted. Um, thermometer says, eh, spot on 70 degrees. So, what I have here is my little wine transfer pump I normally will use to go from one fermentator to the secondary. So I'm going to use it to siphon down into my fermentator. I have this black line and this thermometer right at one gallon. Uh, one gallon is crucial for this batch because we're making one gallon. Um, shortly after we had it transferred, we're going to put it in this pot, uh, stabilize it at 70, make sure things are great. And then uh, we're going to pitch our yeast. Uh, right before we pitch the yeast, we'll take our hydrometer and we're going to get our OG or we're going to get our first gravity. So in the end, we'll know exactly how much alcohol we have created. See you in a little bit. Okay, we have got our stuff stabilized. Uh, you can see what we left behind here which is uh, a lot of stuff. So, by using the uh, siphon pump, um, you could probably transfer less if you, if you use coffee filter, cheesecloth, things of that nature. So, so we transferred it over. Uh, this is basically what our beer is looking like before fermentation. Looks like we're at 68 which is probably okay to pitch the yeast. Uh, what we got to do right now is use our thief. We need to fill our cylinder and check our gravity. So I'm going to hand this to Deb. All right, let me... Uh, it's crucial to know, to me it is, because I like to know how much alcohol is in my beverage. So, um, you can see uh, I've used quite a bit of stuff. Um, you need quite a bit of equipment, and you honestly need a little bit of knowledge and a lot of patience. Um, to make one gallon of beer here, we're looking at two hours. I'm earning, oops, I'm earning my drinks today, so. Um, all of this can go back in. Everything was, once again, you can see in the sink here, it was all sanitized. And if this was a deeper bottle, I could fill this thief much quicker. All right. Normally I use my thumb, but my arms are not up to 100% strength from surgery. But... I'm having fun, so let's see what we got here. Just give me a little bounce, give her a little turn. I'm looking at, I'm looking at a gravity of of ten seventy, ten seventy two. Okay, I'm going to check and make sure that's where I need to be, and uh, we'll be pitching our yeast next. Okay, so I double checked on the specific gravity. Uh, we should have fell right about 1070. Uh, it says uh, 1061 to 1067. So it could add a little liquid, I'm going to leave it alone. Um, the alcohol by volume on this should be around six and a half. So we'll see where we end up on the downside when we ferment all the way out. Uh, so now it's time to pitch our yeast. Uh, we are using, it looks like a Safay, Safail US05 that came with a kit. Uh, not familiar with it, but. 
we need a half a teaspoon. Or actually, I think it said one teaspoon. Let me double check on our one teaspoon. So, sanitize these again. Just keep everything nice and clean. We do not want any contaminants whatsoever. Okie dokie. So, with that said, we're just going to sprinkle this around about. That's about all we got to do. I'll check here. Uh, do do do. Do not rehydrate and stir stir with a small end of a stable paddle. So they do say give it a little stir. Some do, some don't. If you look uniformly, you can see that it um, spreads out on its own. A lot of wine I make, I don't stir it. Um, so. Um, some yeast, you put it in water and you hydrate it and you a little warm water and it says here, uh, uh, do not hydrate, rehydrate. So, with that said, we're going to give it a simple stir as soon as I wash this. I'm going to put our cap on, put a little water in our bubbler, and uh, it's going to sit for about 7 to 10 days. And then uh, you'll see the beer when it's done. Thanks for watching.